Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to Zeroing In on Zerto. Uh, so I'm gonna give us a, a very quick intro here. Uh, my name's James, I'm from Data Barracks, and I'm, I'm joined today uh, by Tamir from Zerto. So before I hand over, I'm just gonna give a quick, uh, a quick intro and a bit of housekeeping. So today's webinar is scheduled to be 30 minutes in duration, um, and we've actually got uh, an awful lot to get through. So we, we're gonna be kicking off with why hypervisor-based hypervisor disaster recovery is such a good idea. Uh, Tamir is gonna give us a run through of what Zerto's architecture looks like and how it works. Uh, we're gonna talk about automa automating recovery, uh, and we're actually gonna have a very quick demonstration of that recovery. Um, so we're 30 minutes in total, but we're also planning uh, a short amount of time for Q&A. So you may see over on the right-hand side, um, you will have uh, a box for questions. So as we're working through, if there's anything that crops up, uh, pop those questions in and we'll, we'll run through those at the end. Uh, you'll also see we have uh, a couple of handouts that we've popped in. Um, so these are uh, a few resources that we think are pretty useful. If, if Zerto is a product that you're looking at, then um, definitely download each of those and, and have a read through. Uh, so before I hand over, I'm gonna run through uh, just a very quick intro to who we are. So we are, as I'm sure you all know, Data Barracks. Um, so we're a uh, cloud service provider with uh, a focus on backup and disaster recovery. Um, and I want to mention in particular disaster recovery. So we were recently featured um, in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for uh, DR as a service. Um, and for those of you who, who don't know, the Magic Quadrant is uh, an assessment that Gartner run on several different um, technologies and sectors. Uh, and it's, it's a report uh, on a particular market uh, and they look at a global market and they'll look at um, different vendors within that, that market and they'll assess them based on two criteria. Uh, so we have the ability to execute and the completeness of vision. And you'll see us there. So we were really pleased to be recognized as a, a, a niche vendor uh, for disaster recovery, which for us is terrific as a, as a UK only service provider. Um, and so one of the things that um, is so key for us in, in, in that service that we provide is that the technology that we build it upon, um, which is why we've invited uh, Tamir to give us a, a, a deep dive, a really deep technical look at, uh, at the software. So before I hand over, I just wanna kick off with uh, a very quick poll um, so I'm going to pop this. You should see this popping up on your screen now. Um, and it's just a simple question. It's have you tested uh, your disaster recovery plan in the last 12 months? So please uh, pop those in and we'll see what the, uh, what the answer is. It's really interesting. So the answer we've got there is 68% uh, of folks have said, no, they've not tested in the last 12 months. Um, which tends to tends to, to tally pretty closely with some of the some of the research that we've done in the past. Uh, so I'm going to ask you a second question here, uh, and that is, what was the recovery point objective? So that's the recovery point objective of that of any test that you've done. So I'd assume that this will be answered by a few less folks, as there's only a, a small portion that have done any testing in the last 12 months. We'll pop those all those all in. A terrific. So quite a range of of, of answers on on this question. Um, this is very interesting. So only only a quarter have a recovery point objective of less than one hour, um, and actually a quarter at the other end. So that's a recovery point objective of over 24 hours. Uh, so a couple of a couple of interesting points here for for Tamir. So let me pass over to Tamir now. Uh, Tamir, welcome. Thank, thank you very much, James. Um, so I'm Tamir Solomon. I'm from Zerto. I've been with the company for the past two years, have been working mainly with cloud providers throughout EMEA. So have been with the company and we have been working with Databricks quite closely. As James mentioned, what I want to go over today is have an overview of Zerto, the product, how does it work, how we revolutionize the market, and we'll start with high, why hypervisor-based disaster recovery, uh, what makes it different. So back in the days, it was all around storage-based replication, replicating lens at the physical layer, which is great, but then again, has nothing to do with the virtual tier, virtual environment. Understanding that it's in the wrong place, Zerto took it, um, because it's generating, first of all, it locks you down to a specific vendor. You, need, you can't really mix and match, and it requires quite a lot of maintenance and, and architecture 
and configuration to keep it running. And it has no interaction with a virtual tier. You need other tools in order to achieve that. Understanding that, Zerto took the replication to a different place, uh, the hypervisor based. Um, and being at that tier, which is kind of the exact tier we want to be at, not too high level in the VM or affecting the applications, but moving away from the storage and the physical tier, Zerto was able to provide the first enterprise class end-to-end -end software defined, both uh, taking care of your replication, copying the data, as well as taking care of the entire automation process to start the application on the recovery side in the event of the disaster. Okay, so that's a, a key difference. And we see a lot of other software defined services, network storage, et cetera, um, implementing their solutions in the hypervisor tier by leveraging this uh, virtualization tier. So Zerto is all about providing enterprise class, virtual replication, uh, business continuity disaster recovery solutions for two major markets, the enterprise or private clouds, as well as uh, hybrid and public clouds. In terms of the enterprise market, we are working, um, we've spread out across 37 countries by now, working with more than 1,200 uh, customers, enterprise customers around the globe. Some of them are Fortune 500 and 100. You can see some of the names on the screen. And we have been doubling our customer base and cloud providers and, and partners and everybody. We're, we're pretty much becoming the standards in the business continuity disaster recovery field. And maybe the four key features is we are completely 100% virtual aware. We integrate into the virtual environment into your vSphere, understanding the virtual environments, their VMs, their configurations, the data stores, the networks, and being able to create exactly the same thing on the recovery side. We're providing enterprise class BCDR. Now you did mention uh, in the poll that we just ran what was the RPO. Sort of is able to provide SLAs uh, that are really meeting your enterprise needs in terms of uh, SLAs in terms of production impact and in terms of the ability to scale. We're talking here RPOs, recovery point objective of seconds, and RTOs, time objectives, usually within minutes, obviously depending on um, some parameters there. It's a software only solution, so there's nothing physical to take care of. You don't need to worry about appliances and physical appliances that may break or uh, ordering some hardware to upgrade to a newer version. And we are agnostic. We're agnostic to the storage, we're agnostic to the VMware versions, uh, and we are, we've are we started supporting Hyper-V as well to becoming completely hypervisor agnostic, okay? This is what Zerto is all about. In terms of the architecture, Zerto is based on two main components. Okay, we have a manager, a Zerto virtual manager. It's a Windows software which installs in minutes in your virtual environment. You have a vCenter, it will plug in into your vCenter, will communicate with the vCenter over APIs, and it will integrate to the user interface of vSphere client. So you can literally operate Zerto from a single uh, pane of glass, your vSphere client, and this is the manager similarly to the way that vCenter manages your virtual environment, the Zerto virtual manager will manage the replication. From it you deploy a virtual replication appliance. It's another VM, very lightweight VM that needs to or re recommended to be deployed in each host in the environment just to be able to protect VMs if they start moving uh, from one host to another. The virtual replication appliance require one virtual CPU. When you deploy it, there is no downtime, no impact to the install. And it will, that's the basically the component that will do the, the heavy lifting and will take care of the replication of the data from your site to the data barracks or to the recovery site. We're replicating the data. Um, and in terms of the network requirements, the minimum requirements is five megabits per second. Obviously, in order to meet SLAs, if you do 
end up with a lot of IOs that needs to be replicated. Uh, five megabits will probably not be enough. But we are compressing the data before we send it over. You have the ability to define throttling if you want to limit it throughout the day. And we have resiliency mechanisms to ensure that if the link goes down, even for longer periods of time, we will be able to recover and uh, basically send only the relevant data to the recovery side whenever the link goes back up. And another interesting feature here is the ability to do point-in-time recovery. So basically, we're leveraging a journal base. We're not using snapshots. And we're maintaining a journal on the recovery side that literally allows you to rewind your application to a previous point in time. And by that, offering protection not just from physical disasters, but more of a logical uh, kind of disaster if you have a DB corruption, a virus, or something of that sort that will require rewinder of your application an hour, two hours, or even 14 days ago. The way we do it is basically for every block that is being written asynchronously, we will replicate the blocks to the recovery side, maintaining them on the journal first and then promoted to the VMDK. I see there are questions, but um, for the sake of time, we will save them to uh, to the, the end of the presentation. So this is the way we're doing it. And again, going back to the poll, we are providing RPOs of seconds because we're able to do it. Min minimizing your data loss, allowing you to meet SLA, your business SLAs that are required for your applications. For recovery, we are not using snapshots for that point in time recovery. Not leveraging snapshots allows us to actually be much more enterprise class because there is no production impact. When you are generating snapshots, sometimes production is impacted, it freezes, or um, uh, what have you. So we're not leveraging snapshots for this, allowing really enterprise class solution. We're completely storage agnostic, so any type of storage that you have there, any configuration of the storage you may have there, Zerto will support it. And since our latest version, if you are running a Hyper-V environment, you're able to replicate it even cross hypervisor, between hypervisors. So you can very well go and protect the Hyper-V environment and recover it in data barracks, um, which is a VMware environment. OK, now the concept of what we're protecting is called virtual protection groups. OK, we are here to protect applications. Applications may very well reside on different hosts and different data stores. And yet, we want to treat it as an application, have it be your SharePoint, your Exchange, your CRM. It doesn't really matter. You want to treat it as an application, fail it over as an application, and fail it over to the same point in time across the application. And Zerto allows you to do that. You build that consistency group of VM of VMs that represent the application. You can define priority between applications. The ones that are more critical will take precedence over the link and allowing you to actually meet, again, the business uh, requirements. And once you have configured it, um, and again, it doesn't matter if they sit on different hosts. It's a logical entity, so you can build it, and they can sit on different hosts and sit on different data stores. And even more than that, they can start moving around afterwards. So if you have a high availability cluster or a DRS or storage vMotion, Zerto will continue to protect your application seamlessly uh, while you have these VMware events happening. Right? You have the ability to do preceding as well and really leverage that um, entity to allow protection. You can also define boot order between the VMs if you want to start a database server first, and then the application server, and then the web server, for example. We are performing continuous data protection. Right, We're protecting your data all the time for every block being written, sent asynchronously to the recovery side. And this is uh, how you can literally rewind. I will probably show it later in the demo if time permits. but. Um, 
this is really the way to actually rewind your application to a previous point in time. So let's say from the screen here, let's say at, at 3.49 I had a virus, um, 3.49 p.m. I can very easily select a checkpoint before that and recover before the virus infected my environment. I have a DB corruption, I can go back to a previous point in time. Okay, it's very easy to select that and rewind your application to a previous point in time. It's literally acting like a DVR, protecting you from logical failures. Okay, and as you can see here, you don't need to go back to the last backup or snapshot that was generated on the VM, four hours or 24 hours as some of you wrote in their RPO. And we are ensuring right order fidelity here. So we were literally bringing back the application throughout its VMs to the same point in time. You're not recovering the app server, the DB server to different point in time, creating inconsistency. You're bringing them to exactly the same point in time. Good. In terms of how to operate Zerto, this is the, we have the web interface or the plugged in uh, interface into vSphere client. They both look the same. This is how it looks like. I just want to show you how easy it is to actually do a failover if your site is still available because it's a logical failure. You just switch the button to a live failover, click failover, select the application that you want to failover. You can choose one or more. And then select next and start failover. And Zerto will start the application on the recovery, on the recovery side and automate the entire process. Now, what do we do in terms of the automation, you may ask, if you wanted to re-IP, for example. So again, you need to configure it once, but Zerto will allow you to re-IP the VMs, reset the MAC addresses, run scripts if you want, and also introducing something that is called commit policy, which kind of let you verify that the actual failover was executed as expected and the application is running before you commit it and decide that, yeah, this is now my new production site. If you see that something isn't right, you can very easily roll back the operation to a previous, to select a different checkpoint. The entire process happens automatically within minutes. So recovery time objective here is minutes, again, depending on the SLA you have with data barracks. Um, but that's what the software is able to do depending on the underlying infrastructure. At any point in time, again, this goes back to the first poll that we asked, it, you have the ability to test. So you, you're not limited to one test a year to actually verify the DR is working. You, you can test it any time by creating a copy of your application or applications in an isolated bubble network. And you can do a couple of things with this test and not just leverage for DR testing. You can measure your RTO in, in real time. You can test things in production that you um, didn't or couldn't test in production. You can leverage the testing for a lot of things here. You have the ability to do migrations as well. So at any point in time, you can, if it's a planned downtime that you have um, and you, you're basically um, you want to take down your environment and do some maintenance work for a week, you can very easily migrate your application to Data Barracks and then whenever you're ready, migrate it back or fail back uh, after the maintenance window. And when I say fail back, the, it's a, as easy as a single click. So all you need to do is basically say, yeah, I want to fail back. Um, I want to protect it in the reverse direction first. The settings will be applied by default, and Zerto will fail over back to the production site um, with a single click. The user interface is HTML5 based, so you can very easily use it, and you can see some of the management and control across, and it's the same in vCenter, it's the same in Hyper-V, same interface, and you can see some real-time network data as well as uh, KPIs dashboard on how many VMs, how many VPGs are protected, how much data and what's the compression. Now, I do have a few minutes for a demo. 
Um, I want to do it real quick so you can actually, we, we can jump to Q&A at the end of this. And what I want to show you is basically a primary vCenter. This is my site. I have a manager and a virtual replication appliance here, and I have a CRM application here. Okay, I want to show you how easy it is to protect. I can basically create a virtual protection group, decide on a name, select which VM participate besides the CRM app server. I can define their boot order. I can choose my recovery side, again, based on what data barracks are providing me. And I'm going to replicate into vCloud from vCenter, giving an org VDC that is available for me, again, based on data barracks data barracks allocations. I can do some volume settings, choose which networks to connect to in the event of a failover, choose whether to enable VCD guest customizations or not, decide what will be my bubble network when I do testing, re-IPing if needed, this is the place, resetting MAC addresses, and then done, okay? What I've just done is create a protection group to protect my CRM application. This is how easy it is. And the first thing that will happen now is basically setting up this application on the recovery side as well. And you can see on the target side, vCenter, which is vCloud-based, things are happening, but the source continues to run uninterruptedly. And besides integrating with the user interface, you can actually see uh, the task progress at the bottom. And once it finishes the setup, it will do the initial sync, basically sending the data over. And you do have the ability to do preceding. If you have a copy of that data and you want to send it back to Data Barracks, you can definitely do that as well. Okay. Now it's in a syncing phase. And once the syncing phase will be completed, and in this case it will be very fast because it's not it's very small VMs, I will be able to actually fail over this application. And I'm logging into my vCloud to show you in my org VDC, you don't actually see anything here. There is no application currently exists here. But once I do decide to fail over my application, if it's meeting SLA now, let's go back to this GUI. Okay, we're meeting SLA now. I can do a failover test, hit next, select a checkpoint in time from the list of available, already available checkpoints, hit next, and hit start failover, and this will actually create the VMs on the recovery side. Here, you can see that happening under the right resource pool, and it will also create the application in my org VDC. Okay, so I think um, I'll let it run in the background for everybody to see, uh, but I think we can probably start uh, some questions now. Perfect. Let me uh, let me jump in in that case, and I'll run through some of the questions that we've we've had through. Um, first, I want to say thanks to me. I think that's that's been really really terrific. I think hopefully everyone can see. Uh, why Zerto is, is such an exciting piece of technology, something we've been really, really keen on for, for a long time. Um, yeah, this, this is absolutely terrific. Uh, so actually, very quickly, before I jump into the questions, I want to, to mention um, uh, a, a quick um, mention to our next webinar in this, this series of, uh, of disaster recovery webinars that we're holding um, before the end of the year. So today has been focused very much on the technology uh, and so deliberately, we want to look at the, the other side um, for, for our next webinar, which is all about the process and not about the technology at all. We're going to make a real effort to, to, to not mention anything about, about any technologies or, or, um, or methods. So how to write uh, an IT disaster recovery plan? It's going to be held on the 1st of October. So it's almost uh, a month away exactly. Uh, again, 2 p.m. Uh, on Thursday afternoon. So we'll we'll send out this this webinar has been recorded. We'll be be sending out the slides and a, and a link to the recording uh, and a link to, to our next webinar. So uh, keep an eye out for that one. Um, so questions, I'll uh, I'll run through a couple here. We've got as many as we will have time for. So uh, first of all, we have question number one, which is how can you work out how much bandwidth you need? He did mention less than five megabits per second, but um, I can see this is a, a looking for something a, a bit more specific than that. 
Absolutely. So uh, obviously, the bandwidth is determined by the amount of I/O that needs to be sent. Um, it's obviously very dependent on the source VM behavior, and based on the source VM behavior, which is very easily gathered using V-series statistics, it's very easy to use a tool to calculate the required bandwidth uh, with an estimated uh, compression rate. And so, very quickly, this is so. This is a tool that that, that we can we can offer to people. Absolutely. Great. So if it's um, if if that's of interest uh, to anyone, then do do drop us an email. Uh, if you if you pop an email to uh, info at data barracks or or any contact that you have here, um, if you want to check on on how much bandwidth you you would need to to replicate using Zerto, then we can we can set up that tool for you. Uh, so the next question, actually, another something that you mentioned in terms of um, of, of speed of failover, but again, it's how how long does it take to fail over is the question. So obviously the VMs will be up and running um, by Zerto automatically within minutes. You may need to do things external such as updating a DNS server or redirecting your customers. Um, Zerto will probably finish the task in, within minutes again depending on the underlying infrastructure and then from it it's basically whenever you decide the application is ready. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, the next question I have wasn't something you mentioned. Um, so we have the question, uh, what is the advantage over SRM? So SRM is not uh, a replication. Um, it's an orchestration tool. It needs to come with an underlying replication engine, which is either VC replication or, S or uh, array-based replication. And as such, we start handling different versions, different integration points, different appliances that start to complex the entire solution. Then depending on the underlying replication engines, you have different features that are, aren't supported um, by it. But it's, it's like comparing oranges to apples. It's not a replication product, it's an orchestration product only. Perfect. We do have uh, a handful of other questions, which I don't think we're going to have time to get through uh, today. Um, but we will. Well, I'll go through these with with Tamir later this afternoon, and we'll um, we'll respond to everyone individually who's who's has asked a question that we haven't managed to get around to. Uh, but that takes us a bang on time to to half past two. So um, thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, we hope we'll to to speak with you again in a in a month's time.